In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'audhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome and marhaba to another episode of this series Dimensions of Islamic Life And inshallah Azza wa Jal In today's episode and program We are going to discuss the topic Of concealing faults And attaining paradise Subhanallah So yes it is that easy. Conceal faults and attain paradise, subhanallah. But before we do that, let's inshallah azza wa jal extol the virtues of reciting salat and salam in the court of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It is narrated from Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whosoever day and night recites salat ten times upon me, on the day of judgment, my intercession will reach him, subhanallah. Let's inshallah azza wa jal make sure that we attain the intercession of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by reciting salat upon him at least 10 times subhanallah subhanallah. Let's inshallah azza wa jal at the same time together in one voice I would request you to recite salat and salam in the court of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with me sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. As we have spoken about shafa'at of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's inshallah azza wa jal recite a few uh, pieces of poetry with regards to the intercession of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidi Allah Azza says, Pesh haq mujda shafa'at ka sunate jayenge Pesh haq mujda shafa'at ka sunate jayenge Pesh haq mujda shafa'at ka sunate jayenge aap rote jayenge hum ko hasate jayenge pesh haq mujda shafaat ka sunate jayenge dil nikal jaane ki ja hai aah kin aankhon se wo dil nikal jaane ki ja hai aah kin aankhon se wo hum se pyaasoon ke liye dari ya baha te jayenge hum se pyaasoon ke liye darya bahate jayenge aap rote jayenge hum ko hasate jayenge wo saate di hai khuda दामने महबूब को वो सरते दी है खुदा ने दामने महबूब को जुर्म खुलते जाएंगे और वो छुपाते जाएंगे जुर्म खुलते जाएंगे और वो छुपाते जाएंगे पेश हक मुजदा शफात का सुनाते जाएंगे लो आए मुस्कुरा 
ہوتے ہم مسیروں کی طرف لو آئے مسکراتے ہم مسیروں کی طرف خرمن اس یہاں پہ اب بجلی گراتے جائیں گے خرمنے اس یہاں پر اب بجلی گراتے جائیں گے آپ روتے جائیں گے ہم کو ہساتے جائیں گے خاک ہو جائیں عدو جل کر مگر ہم تو رضا خاک ہو جائے عدو جل کر مگر ہم تو رضا دم میں جب تک دم ہے ذکر ان کا سناتے جائیں گے دم میں جب تک دم ہے ذکر ان کا سناتے جائیں گے پیش حق مجدہ شفاعت کا سناتے جائیں گے آپ روتے جائیں گے ہم کو ہساتے جائیں گے صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ دیا ویوز از اور ٹاپک فور ٹوڈے اس کونسیل فالٹس این اٹین پیراڈائز سبحان اللہ ان دس ریگارڈ دیز بیوٹیفل نریشن دیٹ سیدہ رابی عدویہ رحمت اللہ تعالی علیہ has said that when a person tastes the enjoyment of divine love, Allah Azza wa Jal makes him aware of his own shortcomings, due to which he does not remain busy in the faults of others. Rather, he remains focused on rectifying his own faults. Yes, there may be thousands of faults within us, but we turn a blind eye over our own faults and start finding faults in others, which is opposed to the Islamic teachings. The Islamic teachings is the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْئِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي It is the beauty of a person's Islam to abandon what does not concern him. So others' faults should not concern us, but our own faults. Take a hard look in the mirror and you will find plenty of them. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated, O oh, those who have established faith with their tongues, but faith has not entered their hearts. Do not backbite others and do not search into their hidden matters for this reason that whoever looks into the hidden matters of his Muslim brother, Allah Azza wa Jal will reveal his faults. Whoever's faults are revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal, that person will be disgraced even if he is within the confines of his own home. Allah Akbar. Do we really want that? O devotees of the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one should not seek out the faults of other Muslims. Allah Azza wa Jal states in Surah Al-Hujrat, verse number 12, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not look for faults. Sheikh Sayyid Naimuddin Murad Abadi rahimahullah ta'ala has stated that do not search for the faults of Muslims and do not remain engaged in finding out about the hidden state which Allah Azza wa Jal has hidden due to him being sattari meaning the one who conceals subhanallah Allah Azza wa Jal is sattar it has been narrated on the authority of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma that the Noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated a Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. He does not oppress him nor does he leave him alone or without help. Whoever fulfills the need of his brother, Allah Azza wa Jal fulfills his need. And whoever distances another Muslim from pain, Allah Almighty will remove a pain from him. 
from the pains of the day of judgment. Whoever conceals the fault of another Muslim, Allah Almighty, the Sattar, will conceal his faults on the day of judgment. Man satara Musliman, satarahu Allahu yawm al qiyamah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated that the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever conceals the shortcoming of his brother upon witnessing them will be made to enter paradise. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So yes, true to our topic for today, conceal faults and attain paradise. Subhanallah, listen to this hadith again. Whoever conceals the shortcoming of his brother upon witnessing them will be made to enter paradise. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Such an easy formula of attaining paradise, subhanallah. If we could only learn to suppress this temptation of exposing others, I mean, you get such a kick out of it, but it's short-lived, it's temporary. The joy you get out of it is temporary and this is the doing of shaitan. This is not real joy that you get because shaitan made you do this he makes you that feel that kick for the time being, and then it's over. What have you earned? You've earned the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because whoever exposes the faults of another Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal will expose you, even if you are hidden in the confines of your own home. Allahu Akbar. We as the devotees of the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what can be said of the virtues that lie in concealing faults. We should adhere to that. Whatever is of a high degree of importance in the hereafter, Satan will harass one to that extent. He uses all the tricks of his trade to stop a Muslim from concealing the faults of another Muslim, the effects of which have caused such a great harm that the majority of Muslims are now involved in backbiting, exposing the shortcomings of another Muslim. What has gotten to us today, we as Muslims are not prepared to hide the faults of other Muslims. Rather, we expose such shortcomings without any hesitation and at times are even proud of engaging in this evil act. And we take pride in it when we are exposing somebody's faults. We say, you know, so and so, he's like this, he's like that. And we are expecting a wow to come from the other side as we are exposing the faults of others, putting others to embarrassment. This person may have been a good friend of the, uh, the person whose fault you are exposing. But now because of you opening your mouth, you have caused a distaste and bitterness in the relationship. They may never be able to mend only because of you not being able to you know keep it a secret as Allah Azza wa Jal keeps your secrets imagine if our secrets are exposed to the world what an embarrassment would that be each one of us we know of our flaws we know how deep they go yet we are not concerned about that we are concerned about other people's flaws yes so as we are drowning, it's like you are drowning and, and you see somebody else drowning. So you don't worry about yourself. And you are telling others, look, look, that person is drowning. And you make fun of it. You make fun of that person. Whereas you yourself are drowning right till here. It is about time that the water reaches over your head. Then what? Then you're going to regret that no, you should have worried about yourself instead of pointing fingers at somebody else who's drowning and making a mockery out of him. This is our state. Sometimes when we meet someone after a long time, you know, it, it's nice two brothers meeting one another and then you start talking, you start catching up on old times. But instead of talking about each other, you start talking about other people. Oh, you know, that one, remember that one, what he used to do, he used to do this, he used to do that. And then he'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I remember this, this fellow, he, he's like this, he does this, 
uh, evil act and so on and so forth. You are exposing the faults of others. You are backbiting that person. Allahu Akbar. And you get a joy out of it. Instead of you meeting after a long time, finding about each other's and, and uh, each other's well-being and, and finding out about each other's state, you know, relating to one another. You're talking about other people who are not even in the conversation. So yes, we need to be mindful of these things. For example, there may be a good proposal that came through and um, you got a friend or family, they received a nice proposal and um, you go there and then when they tell you, oh, I've got this proposal for my, for my son, for my daughter or whatever the case may be. And then you tell them, you know what, are you marrying in that family? You must know something about that family. And the boy is like this or the girl is like that. And it may not, uh, it, it may not be something major, but you can't shut up and you start going one after the other, pointing out their flaws one by one. And whereas this family has been on friendly terms with them and they may ha have been looking forward to having a relationship, but because of you coming in the picture, you have ruined it for both the families. Now the bitterness will go to an extent where they don't even see eye to eye to one another let alone forming a relationship together. Allah Akbar. Who's free from faults? Are you free from faults? Am I free from faults? None of us are. So why do we carry on like we are, you know, as pure as milk and honey, whereas the rest of the creation, they are a piece of garbage? Is that the attitude of a Muslim? Is that how we are supposed to think of other brothers in Islam? If someone does conceal the fault of another, subhanallah, it is only temporary. If, even if we do conceal the faults of others, we do it just on a temp temporary basis. And as soon as there is a dispute between them, they expose all the faults that were hidden. Let's say, for example, you, you are friends with somebody and they confided in you. And uh, alhamdulillah, you kept each other's secrets, but it was all temporary. As soon as there was some bitterness between the two of you, something happened. And then after that, all the secrets are out. All what they have confided in you are thrown at your faces. And it has become public knowledge. Unfortunately, there is no fear of the hereafter whatsoever. The punishment in hell is severe and we cannot bear it. Let me narrate a narration to you that Sayyidina Isa, Ruhullah alayhi salam, he has stated that many people with a strong body a handsome face and a sweet talking tongue will be screaming in the depths of hell. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The shayar says, Auro ke aib chhod, nazar khubiyo pe rak. Aibo ki apne bhai magar khub rak pe rak. Allahu Akbar. Means, it means that, leave other people's faults and the uh, evil traits. But, when you look at others, look at their goodness. Look at what values can, can you learn from them? What, what's valuable, what's, what's good that they do that you can learn from them. But when it comes to the faults, look at your own faults. Look at your own faults and have full knowledge of them. That will keep you from uh, gazing and from digging and prodding on other people's faults. Forget the shortcomings of others and keep an eye on their excellence. However, focus on your own faults and impertinence. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, make sincere tawbah from uh, exposing the faults of others and looking for fault in others. Tubu ila Allah. أستغفر الله صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is mentioned that سيدنا حسن بصري رحمه الله تعالى has stated that backbiting causes corruption in the faith of a believer faster than the disease of akila ruins his body. الله أكبر. What is akila? 
Akila is a boil that emerges in the side of the body whereby the skin corrodes and the flesh rots. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So it is even more severe and dangerous than that. He, radiallahu ta'ala, who has further stated that, O son of Adam, you cannot attain the reality of faith until you stop searching for the faults of others. Whatever faults you find within yourself, begin to rectify and remove them from yourself. When you do this, this will lead to being occupied with yourself. And according to Allah Azza wa Jal, such a person is most liked. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, the religious movement of Quran and Sunnah comprising of the devotees of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, dawat islami is a Sunnah inspired movement for the rightly guided Sunnis. Its beliefs are in complete accordance with the Holy Quran and the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the Sunnah. Remain affiliated with it always. And inshallah Azza wa Jal, through the blessings of the company of the devotees of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will develop a passion to safeguard your faith. Perform righteous deeds and have hatred towards backbiting and other sins. The protection of our faith is absolutely vital. If we lose our faith, then all the worship that we have done and will do will be worthless. The beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Deeds are based upon the ending. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. No matter what calamity befalls us, our faith should not waver. Here is Alhamdulillah, a faith refreshing and heart wrenching story about 22 year old revert from the city of Delhi in India. The story of him accepting Islam is that his family and himself were non-Muslims. They were non-Muslims and his father desired that he be become a doctor. In this regard, his father had a friend who was a doctor and the son was sent to a hospital owned by the said friend. The non-Muslim doctor had extreme hatred for Muslims. His resentment for Muslims was so deep rooted that he would never eat food touched by a Muslim. These habits were adopted by the young man. And he would rather remain thirsty than drink from the hands of a Muslim. Many years went by in this fashion. And when one day an Islamic brother with a green Imam Sharif came to the hospital for an eye operation, his manners, excellent character, lowered gaze and politeness, subhanAllah, inspired the young man and they became close. He would often carry out individual efforts in Firadi Koshish and try to inspire the young man to accept the truth. Though he left the hospital after a few days, they remained in touch and would continue to meet, subhanAllah. The Islamic brother had a lengthy book with him entitled Faizane Sunnat, subhanAllah. When he would go for chok dars, dars outside on the street. He would often invite the young man to come along and he would gladly accept. After listening to the dars a few times, the hatred of Islam in his heart began to change into admiration. SubhanAllah. Because of this admiration, he would not hesitate anymore to eat with Muslims and began to respect the azan and the masjid. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And in the year 2004, he appeared to read a book entitled Method of Ghusl, published by Maktabatul Madina Dawat Islami's publishing department. He clarified the ruling about purity, but in the end, he stated that true purity can only be achieved by accepting Islam. The word pierced his heart like an arrow, and these words were the turning point of his life. After much reflection, he recited the kalima, the declaration of faith, and came into the fold of Islam. He was rescued from the darkness of kufr, and thus his heart was enlightened by the light of faith. Subhanallah. He began to take part in Dawat Islami's sunnah-inspiring weekly ijtima. 
And he also took bayah of allegiance in the Qadriya Razviya Tariqa, the spiritual order, and became a murid and disciple of Ghawsi Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He began to offer the daily salah. However, at times, satanic deceptions about Islam would cross his mind. One day, he happened to read the booklet entitled An Old Worshipper. Alhamdulillah, his mind became free of those satanic deceptions. And he was fortunate to travel in Madani Qafila with the devotees of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the 18th of July, 2005. Before this, he would become displeased with family over small issues and would often argue with them if the food was not according to his liking. However, with the blessings of traveling in Madani Qafila, his temper calmed down and his behavior changed for the better. And his family was astonished at his change and they too began to admire the religion of Islam. He grew a beard and also wore the crown of green imama but would take it off before he entered his home. After a few days, other people began to incite his family against him. As a result, the matter took a turn for the worse and his family began to be oppressive when dealing with him. He was rebuked, scolded and beaten. He left his house, but after a few days, his brothers persuaded him to go back and he complied. They forced him to the barber shop so that he could shave his beard off. However, the barber became apprehensive and refused to shave his beard off when he told him that he had accepted Islam. His family also feared repercussions when it came to the beard until a beardless and ignorant Muslim told him it was not necessary to keep a beard as he had not kept it and neither had millions of Muslims around the world. Upon hearing this, his family lost in the obscurities of disbelief, found renewed courage and one day began to shave his beard off whilst he was asleep. He woke up and in the midst of the struggle to save his beard, he was injured and his face was drenched in blood. He pleaded, but they did not listen and eventually shaved his beard off. The blood running from his face blended with his tears. They confined and locked him up in a room with no supplies except for clothes. They would watch over his every move. However, despite the watchful observation, he still managed to offer salah. He would give up his sleep to remain in, a, in the state of wudu. He was helpless, alone and no one was around to alleviate his pain and problems. Around two months went by in this manner, in this way. When the holy month of Ramadan approached, alas, who would bring sahri for him? He could not even think of missing a fast, so he fasted without partaking in sahri. His family was suspicious because he did not eat the whole day. And in the evening, they came to him in order to force him to eat. He said to them, leave it, I will eat. When they left, he hid the curry and rolled up the bread into his pocket. However, his family continued to remain suspicious of him. Eventually, they forced him to eat during the daytime. He deeply resented this but could not do anything. Thus, he missed five fasts in this manner. Allahu Akbar. At the end, for some reason, some respite was given by his family members and he was allowed to visit the hospital once again. He would make the intention of observing fast without eating sahri and would take his lunch with him but would eat at the time of breaking the fast. During this time, he also took the legal and official steps that were required to declare one's religion as Islam. And his family remained unaware of this. He would secretly go to the local masjid to offer salah, but the committee of the masjid asked him not to come there, as they were fearful of a troublesome situation arising from this. 
he was heartbroken as hostile circumstances had established a barrier between the masjid and himself. But he could not do anything about that as he was always helpless and alone. The local Madani headquarters were far away. And due to the situation at hand, he had stopped Islamic brothers from contacting him. The continuous stream of trials and tribulations had debilitated him. He could not even find a person whom he could talk to and thus lighten his burden. He was completely alone, but offering salah always filled him with comfort and brought encouragement to his heart. He would continuously recite salat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So much of trouble, Allahu Akbar. Gathering his strength, he began to travel three kilometers to Janta colony and offer congregational salah in a masjid there. His family was showing signs of leniency once again when a so-called Muslim instigated them once again in order to appease them, he distorted their minds in this way that in the end, I am a Muslim. But what kind of salah is offered every day? I simply offer Friday and Eid salahs. It seems like your son is doing something to acquire a jinn under his control. He's become crazy and you will see this. The family members panicked upon hearing the news and reinstated the previous harsh restrictions even to the extent that the boy was not allowed to move his lips to recite Salat upon the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar. His family took him to a self-proclaimed spiritual healer who said that the young man had effects of magic upon him. In this state, the young man was heartbroken. One day, he secretly visited Sunnah-inspired Ijtima of Dawat Islami. When his family found out, they flocked to him and forced him to go back. He did not resist as he did not want any discord to occur. At home, he was assaulted to the point of unconsciousness. Upon waking up, he decided that he will finally leave his home. Despite the fact that three days previously, he received acceptance into a government job, a role that he had spent years in chasing. On one hand, he had his house, his family and a bright future. On the other end, the treasure of faith subhanAllah was awaiting him. He picked the letter by the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal and in order to protect his faith, he left his home on his own accord on the 21st March 2007. Alhamdulillah, today he travels to various cities across India with the devotees of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the form of Madani Qafila. He has also completed the entire number of salah that he had missed because of the restrictions imposed by his family. He also wished to receive the honor of leading Salah as an Imam, subhanAllah. With the blessings of Madani Qafila, he had memorized a few chapters of the Holy Quran with correct pronunciation and necessary rulings regarding Salah. Hence, he was blessed to lead prayer as an Imam in Salatul Fajr on the 13th of April, 2007. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. This is how the revolution of Islam begins and make home into a person's heart. When the light of Islam guides you, subhanAllah, everything becomes illuminated and your path is enlightened, inshaAllah. Just as we have narrated the account of this uh, brother, subhanAllah, Mubarak to him, hats off to him, subhanAllah, that he went through so much of trouble only for the sake of Islam. It reminds us of the sacrifices of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the same time, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Azza wa Jal, keep us steadfast on the beautiful deen of Islam. Inshallah Azza wa now we will listen to a beautiful kalam in the praise of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Waah kya judo karam hai shahe bataha tera. Inshallah, after which we'll return and continue with our topic for today. Inshallah Azza wa stay tuned with Madani channel. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aka, aka. Aka, aka. वो कौन है जिनके दर पर मांगने वाला नहीं नहीं सुनता वो कौन है जिनकी रहमत का दरिया खुद प्यासों को तलाश करता है वो कौन है जिनके इशारे से 
लाखों की शफात हो जाएगी वो कौन है जो महशर के दिन अपने गुलामों को अपने हाथों से जाम कौसर अता फरमाए यकीन वो कोई और नहीं जूदो करम वाले सखावत वाले रहमत वाले रब के हबीब हमारे आका है वाह क्या जू करम है शहबत तेरा नहीं सुनता ही नहीं मिने वाला तेरा वाह क्या जू करम है शहबत के वो है जर्रा तेरा तारे खिलते हैं सखा के वो है जर्रा तेरा वाह क्या जू करम है शहबत जसुस में है दरिया तेरा आप प्यासों के तजसुस में है दरिया शौकत 
से सोलाख को काफी है इशारा उसको 
شفی جو میرا غوس ہے اور لا دل بیٹا تیرا جو میرا غوس ہے اور لا دل بیٹا تیرا واہ کیا جو Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, we have been listening to this inspiring kalam of Sayyidi Ala, Hazrat Ali Rahma. Waah kya judo karam hai, shahe bataha tera. Nahi sunta hi nahi, maangne wala tera. Subhanallah. And uh, mashallah, this is the beautiful praise of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's inshallah, azza wa jal. Again, revert back to our topic of today and that is conceal faults and attain paradise subhanallah let's repent in the court of allah azza wa jal with regret and seek his forgiveness also one should ask allah azza wa jal to forgive the person that has done backbiting the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has stated the atonement for backbiting is this that whosoever you have performed backbiting off, ask for forgiveness on their behalf. And he should say, Allahumma ufir lana wa lahu. Wallah, forgive us and him. Ameen bijahin nabiyil ameen. If you do not remember the name of the person, then I would advise you to say something in this manner, that every now and again during the day, say, O Allah Almighty, until today I repent from all the backbiting I have committed, O Allah Azza wa Jal, whichever Muslim I have backbited up until this day, for the sake of the most noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forgive me and all of them. Remember that one of the conditions for the acceptance of repentance is that you should detest the sin and have a firm intention of not committing that sin ever again, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. If the person that you have committed backbiting against is not aware that you have backbitten him, then it is not necessary to ask him to forgive you. Repent in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal and ask him to forgive you. And make a firm promise to never backbite again. If, however, a person knows that you have spoken behind their back, go and lawfully praise him in the same amount that you had performed backbiting. Display love towards him so his heart becomes happy and pleased and say whatever backbiting I have done regarding you, I am regretful about it. Kindly forgive me. Subhanallah. If for argument's sake he does not forgive you, then inshallah you will not be questioned in the hereafter. If you only said sorry as a formality and you are not sincere in asking him to forgive you, then even if he was to forgive you, the fear of being questioned in the hereafter shall still remain. <laughs> For the sake of your beloved, do not put me on trial Pardon me without examination. I am guilty and frail. Subhanallah. Ameen. Bijahi Nabi. Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us all. Allahu Akbar. This is a lesson that we can take, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, and try to implement it in our lives. 
to conceal the faults of others because we wouldn't want our faults to be exposed. Let's inshallah as we have come towards the conclusion of our program, let's not forget our segment for today and that is to succeed, you must read. Inshallah and in today's episode and program, we again have a beautiful publication of Maktabatul Madina for you, Alhamdulillah, which we are going to discuss just after watching this beautiful clip and nasiha inshallah azza wa jal sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the holy quran surah al-baqara verse 153 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah O believers, seek help from patience and prayer. Whenever you are going through tough times in life or things are not in your favor, turn your attention to the Creator, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Offer salah and seek help. Once you adopt this method, you will see that the difficulties will turn into ease. Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who has stated, as long as you are engaged in salah, you are knocking on the door of the king. For those who constantly knock the door of the king, the door is eventually opened. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alihi wa sallam. Welcome back dear viewers. Alhamdulillah. Our book for today is questions about paradise and the answers are given by Amir al-Sunnat Damad Barakatum al-Aliyah. Subhanallah. Let's inshallah learn uh, beautiful um, and amazing facts related to paradise, which is the final abode and home for the Muslim Ummah and the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we are forgiven and let's make dua inshallah Azza wa Jal that we are forgiven in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we attain paradise. To the Sikh and the Sadaqah of beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a beautiful statement of Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Ta'ala who mentioned on page one of this book, uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal has created a tree in paradise that bears fruit larger than an apple, smaller than a pomegranate, softer than butter, sweeter than honey, and more fragrant than musk. The branches of the tree are made of pearls, its trunk is made of gold, and its leaves are green jewels. Subhanallah. And then it is said, لا يأكل منها إلا من أكثر من الصلاة على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Only those who send an abundance of salat upon Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم can eat the fruits of this tree. صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. This question was asked in the court of Amir al-Sunnah Damat Barakat Mulhaliya. What is Jannah and Paradise? Please explain. In the answer given by Amir al-Sunnah Damad Barakat Mulhaliya, he says that the linguistic meaning of Jannah is garden. It is our belief that Jannah is a place of many great bounties of Allah Almighty. Such bounties that have never been seen by any eye, no heard by any ear. Paradise is only for those people who left the world with their faith intact, despite the existence of Muslim jinn. Paradise is a blessing only for the offspring of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. The one who enters paradise will never be made to leave it. Subhanallah, subhanallah. In the next question he was asked, what are the correct beliefs about paradise? How is it to deny the existence of paradise? To which Amir al-Sunnah Dawud al-Katamul Aliyah says that it is for and obligatory to believe in paradise. The one who rejects his existence is a disbeliever. We are those who have faith in that which we cannot see. It is stated in the glorious Quran, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe without seeing paradise is an unseen thing. And Allah Almighty Himself is the most hidden. Yet we believe in Him. SubhanAllah. Remember that believing in paradise is one of the necessities of the religion. If one says paradise is nothing, these are mere fantasies. He will become a disbeliever and if he does not repent before his death, he will remain in hell for eternity. His salah 
fasting and other good deeds will be of no use to him. May Allah Almighty, for the sake of his beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, allow us sinners to enter paradise without accountability. Ameen bijahin nabi lameen. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, this has been our episode for today. MashaAllah, we have learned the values of concealing faults and in return, inshallah, will be made to enter paradise. Alhamdulillah, we have also come uh, to know some details about this beautiful book, Questions About Paradise and Answers by Amir Rasul Dawud Barakatum Laliya. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, there are many more pages to go through still. Alhamdulillah, and I hope that you will read this book in entirety. You can get your hands on this book uh, either from the bookshop of Dawud Islami of Maktabatul Madina in your area, in your locality, or you can download it free of cost from the website of Dawat Islami, dawatislami.net, inshallah azza wa jal. And that is it for now. Until next time, keep reciting Durood and Salaam in the court of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In the tapestry of Islamic life dimensions unfold. In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold. In these sacred teachings hearts find peace and gold.